There are a whopping 118 known chemical elements out there. Some of them are like superheroes that our bodies need to survive, while others are the ultimate villains. But what exactly makes an element bad? And what elements, despite looking scary, are actually pretty safe? Well, let's see. So, there are different categories of nastiness in a periodic table. First up, we have the radioactivity gang. These elements are like the rock stars of danger. We're talking about elements from atomic number 84, polonium, all the way to the super new element 118, oganesson, which by the way only got its name in 2016. They're highly radioactive, and you definitely want to keep your distance. Next, we have the toxic troublemakers. The US Environmental Protection Agency says they can be harmful to the environment or hazardous to our health if we breathe them in, swallow them, or they sneak into our skin. Yikes. We should definitely stay away from those guys. Last but not least, we have the reactive rascals. These elements are like the fiery daredevils of the periodic table. They're so reactive that they can start fires on their own, spontaneously. They can even burn underwater and make a big boom in the air. So it's best to give them some space and let them do their thing from a safe distance. As you can see, things are quite simple with dangerous elements. We all know that we shouldn't touch most of the elements of the periodic table. Most of them vary from being slightly creepy to absolutely horrifying, like plutonium, arsenic, francium, and so on. But what about the safe ones? Suddenly some elements are so harmless that you can even touch them with your bare hands. So let's take a look at them. First up, we have mercury. Well, to be honest, it can't be called the safest option. Mercury is like a sneaky troublemaker. It's super toxic and has caused health issues around the world throughout history. But humans are curious creatures, so can we touch mercury with our bare hands? Surprisingly, the answer is yes. You see, mercury can't get inside our bodies through the skin, so it's totally fine to touch it without any bad consequences. Mercury is kind of like a liquid that's thicker than water, but not as thick as whole milk. However, it's really heavy because it's 13 times denser than water. So if you held a few drops of mercury in your hand, you'd be amazed at how weighty it feels. Moreover, you can even swallow it. No, it doesn't mean that you should do that. What I meant is, if you accidentally swallow a little bit of mercury, you will most likely be fine. Swallowing elemental mercury isn't a great way for it to get into your system. In fact, less than 0.01% of that tricky element actually gets absorbed by your gut. Phew. But there is such a thing as mercury poisoning. Only it's not about eating it. This usually happens when the metal accumulates in your body over time, either through salts or organic compounds. For example, activities like burning coal and mining for gold release mercury into the environment. And guess what? Fish that are higher up in the food chain can have mercury too. That's because they've been munching on smaller fish that already had some mercury in them. So if you rely heavily on eating fish, especially the big ones, you might want to be a bit more cautious. All this means that we shouldn't go wild and careless with mercury. It's still pretty dangerous. For example, it's a big no-no to touch mercury if you have any cuts. Another thing to watch out for is when tiny droplets of mercury turn into vapor. The easiest way for mercury to sneak into our bodies is through inhalation. So let's keep our distance from that tricky vapor. And also, keep an eye on things like batteries, thermometers, and lamps with mercury. But hey, here's the good news. Mercury poisoning is quite rare, so you don't need to be too scared. While mercury can be a bit of a troublemaker, as long as we're aware and take some precautions, we can still have plenty of fun without it ruining the party. But there are some elements that are much safer than mercury. For example, phosphorus. Phosphorus is like the star of the show, always shining bright. It's actually one of the essential elements for life, just like the ones that make up our bodies. Now phosphorus comes in different forms. One of them is this waxy white substance that you can touch with your bare hands. Isn't that cool? But hold on, there's a catch. This type of phosphorus can be a bit tricky. It's highly reactive and can burst into flames if you give it the chance. And here's a fun fact. Phosphorus is known as the matchstick element because it was once used in the tips of matches to make them light up with a flick. So it's like a mischievous friend, always waiting to pull another prank on you. Definitely not something you want to store at home. 
But don't worry, not all forms of phosphorus are like that. There are other types, like the ones found in our bodies and teeth, that are totally safe. They're necessary for us to stay strong and healthy. There's also red phosphorus, which isn't harmful to skin, and you can safely touch it with bare hands. So, while you can touch certain forms of phosphorus, it's better to leave the pyrotechnics to the professionals. Safety first, friends! Next, we have bromine. Bromine might sound like a superhero name, but in reality, it's more of a sly trickster, always up to something interesting. Bromine is a liquid, which is pretty unique for an element. Most elements are either solid or gas. And guess what? It's like a chameleon because it can change color. Bromine can be red, brown, or even black. Talk about a style icon. Here's another fun fact. Bromine gets its name from the Greek word bromos, which means stench. Why? Because it has a strong smell that can tickle your nose if you get too close. Aside from its unique properties, bromine has some practical uses too. It's used in flame retardants to help keep things safe and prevent fires from spreading too quickly. So even though bromine can be a bit tricky, it's doing its part to make the world a safer place. But hold on. Before you go touching bromine with your bare hands, here's the scoop. It's not the friendliest element to play around with. Bromine is quite reactive and can irritate your skin if you're not careful. So, it's best to keep a safe distance and let the professionals handle it. And finally, carbon. Carbon is like the superhero of the element world. It's everywhere, making up the building blocks of life. I mean, you're made of carbon. Your body, your brain, your skin. Carbon is the key ingredient that makes you, well, you. Carbon is also super versatile. It can take on different forms, like a shape-shifting champion. It can be a sparkling diamond, a soft pencil lead, or even a mysterious black lump of coal. It's in the air we breathe, the food we eat, and the trees and plants that surround us. Oh, and let's not forget about Carbon's role in technology. It's the superstar of the digital age, powering everything from smartphones to computers. So when you're scrolling through social media or playing your favorite game, give a little nod to Carbon for making it all possible. That's why it's totally safe to touch Carbon with your bare hands. Your hands are literally made of it, after all. And it's not like that sneaky phosphorus that can set your fingers on fire. So go ahead, give yourself a high five. Chemistry is like a treasure trove of elements, each with its own unique story. Some might be safe to touch, while others require caution and expertise. But whether we're exploring the world of elements or our own daily adventures, let's always prioritize safety and curiosity. Have fun and stay tuned. Harlequin beetle looks formidable, and it is. This bug's body reaches 3 inches in length, and its front legs are often even longer than that. They help it crawl on trees, getting from branch to branch, and males also use them to impress females. Ooh la la! Despite the looks, harlequin beetles aren't really dangerous. They won't bite you even if you corner them. And if you, by any chance, grow cabbage in your backyard, you probably would try to corner them. These bugs feed on its leaves. Still, better not to touch them with your bare hands. They exude a foul-smelling liquid that both stinks and stings, causing skin irritation. Wear those gloves, will ya? You know what also stinks? Now, besides my socks, squash bugs. If you have a garden patch, these pests can be more than just a nuisance. They could spoil the squash you've been lovingly growing for the fall, hence the name. And if you squash them, they begin to smell just awful, hence the pun. Squash bugs are also often mistaken for stink bugs, but those are even more notorious. They begin stinking even if you so much as touch them. Wow, sensitive! Giraffe weevil is probably the most harmless little fella on this list, but not much is known about it yet. It gets its name from the long, spiny neck. This adaptation helps them build nests and fight over other weevils for food and mates. It may be placid, but the red covering of its wings lets predators know the bug is either foul-tasting or poisonous, or both. Likewise, you shouldn't eat monarch butterflies or their caterpillars. 
These beautiful insects are often kept as pets and were once almost chosen as the national insect of the US. But the little-known fact is that they're highly poisonous. Monarchs feed on milkweed, a plant containing a potent toxin. They've acquired immunity to it, and, as a side effect, butterflies accumulate the toxin in their bodies. This makes them a very unappetizing dish for birds and other predators. The concentration is so high that even humans that accidentally, or not, eat a monarch caterpillar can experience quite unpleasant consequences. Mm. Mealworm beetles are abundant almost anywhere, so you must have seen them. The most probable place to find them is a poultry farm, though. Mealworm larvae are often used to feed farm birds, and that's where the danger lies. Mealworms carry lots of diseases that can spread among birds and then to humans. They also like to eat chicken food and even insulation on farms, so they're not the best choice of a meal for birds, despite their name. And adult beetles produce a poison that's not harmful in small doses but causes allergy in high concentrations. If you happen to be at a poultry farm, make sure you avoid those beetles. Tiger beetles come in lots of shapes and colors. But they all have two traits in common – long, thin legs and sharp, sword-like mandibles. Those legs allow them to run faster than almost any other insect. So fast, in fact, that when they're on a hunt, they sometimes have to stop and look around for a few seconds. Their eyes and brain simply can't process the picture quickly enough, so they wait for the landscape to load around them. Most tiger beetles are harmless, but if you see one with an orange pattern on its back, don't touch it! These bugs produce cyanide to protect themselves, and this chemical can do a lot of harm both to animals and people. If you touch a tiger beetle and then rub your mouth or eyes, it might cause severe irritation. Oh look! See that wonderful pattern on a flower over there? Looks like an impressionist painting, and in a sense it is. That's a Picasso bug. These critters feed on plants and are mostly placid, but think twice if you want to take a closer look. It's not a ladybug. When touched, it'll emit a strong odor that's not exactly flowery. Worse still, you might have a hard time getting rid of the stench even hours after the encounter. Whew! Walking out of a pine forest, you notice a weird movement right beneath your feet. It looks like a little fuzzy train that's several dozen feet long. In fact, it's a defense technique of pine processionary caterpillars. They travel nose to tail in large groups to protect each other. They look really particular, but trying to disrupt the column isn't the best idea. Each car of this natural train has hundreds of needle-sharp bristles. If you touch any of them with your bare hand, they'll first cause sharp pain and then some other unpleasant reactions. Predators don't like pine processionaries for the same reason. Asian giant hornets live mostly in Asian countries, but they were reported in North America in 2019. These beasts are big, yellow, and vicious. It's impossible to confuse a giant hornet with any other bee or wasp. They're much larger and a lot more aggressive. But the worst thing about them is their stinger, which is more than three times longer than that of a honeybee. The stinger contains a really potent venom, and several stings from an Asian giant hornet can bring down even a large animal and a human too. And if that wasn't enough, these creatures can even spray their venom, aiming at the eyes. Needless to say, that's an unforgettable experience. Lenomia is a rather unassuming little moth that doesn't pose a threat to anyone. But before it becomes a moth, it has to go through a caterpillar stage. And that's when you don't want to cross its path. Lenomia caterpillars are covered in hair-thin bristles that contain a powerful venom. But even if you know not to touch them, you still might get pricked. Caterpillars perfectly blend in with tree trunks to add to their protection. A person might unknowingly lean on a trunk with linomias huddled on it, and they won't hesitate to stick those needles into the unlucky guest. If you get stung, immediately seek medical attention. 
Now, let's admit, all centipedes are terrifying. And perhaps one of the most horrible species is a Texas red-headed centipede. First of all, it looks like it's ascended from your deepest, darkest nightmares. A black sectioned body, dozens of yellowish legs that look more like claws, and a red head with two long horns. A picture enough to make me run for it in a split second. Here I go! Being pretty large, these crawlers have a voracious appetite, munching on toads, lizards, and an occasional rat. Sometimes, when desperate, they can even catch a bat right in the middle of a flight. And of course, red-headed centipedes are venomous, fitting for such an appearance. Luckily, they're not interested in humans. And that's mutual. Now, this critter isn't large, but it's very defensive, meaning you don't want to cross it. Its name speaks for itself, the Devil's Coach Horse. A total black bug that resembles an earwig, it will raise its behind and open its powerful jaws when threatened. This pose makes it look like a scorpion, and at this point, better back off. If you don't, the Devil's Coach Horse will start to emit a foul stench and ooze unpleasant liquid from its mouth for defense. And if that doesn't scare you off, it will eventually bite, which is quite painful, you know. Just leave the beast alone, okay? Velvet ants aren't ants at all. They're a kind of wingless wasp that just look a lot like ants. These bugs don't form large colonies and usually live alone, hiding in tall grass. This behavior has given them another nickname, cow ants. Because when a cow is grazing nearby, it might step on a velvet ant and get a painful bite in return. Humans also get bitten sometimes, especially if they walk barefoot. Velvet ants are venomous, but their venom is less potent than that of bees, so it's not really dangerous. Still, the pain from such a bite is serious. And if you want to squash this bug, good luck! They have an unusually tough carapace that protects them from other stinging insects and even birds. Puss moths get their name from their furry, fuzzy appearance. It's like their little fluffy flying kitties. Moths might be cute, but their caterpillars, as always, should only be looked at, not touched. Despite the even fuzzier looks, a puss caterpillar is covered in thousands of hollow spines that break off the critter's back upon contact and inject their venom. And what a venom it is! Puss caterpillars are the most venomous caterpillars in the US. One sting of this little monster can result in days and even weeks of sickness. And if you're allergic to it, then I can only wish you best of luck.